According to a newspaper column, J. Upton Dixon was a fun-loving fella who said he was writing a book entitled Cower Power. He also founded a group of submissive people. It was called Doormats. It stands for Dependent Organization of Really Meek and Timid Souls, if there are no objections. Their motto was, the meek shall inherit the earth, if that's okay with everybody. Their symbol was the yellow traffic light. It has stood the test of time. God's book, the Bible, still relevant in today's complex world. It is written, sharing messages of hope around the world. In Matthew 5, in verse 5, Jesus says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now that was a shocking surprise to his Jewish audience just as the first two Beatitudes were. Jesus called for a standard of living that was foreign to those who heard him. Well, they knew how to be spiritually proud and self-sufficient and were good at following an external form of religion. They thought they could survive spiritually through their own strength, wisdom, and resources. And they expected that when the Messiah arrived, he would say, I'm here to commend you for your wonderful spirituality. God is very pleased with you. I'm here to usher you into the kingdom. But the Lord's first recorded sermon did not confirm such expectations. Now, meekness is different from being broken or poor in spirit, though the Greek root word is the same. Brokenness of spirit is negative in that it focuses on man's sinfulness and results in mourning. Meekness is positive in that it focuses on God's holiness and man's response to that holiness. They are two sides of the same idea. We are to be poor in spirit because we are sinners and meek because God is so holy in comparison to us. Our world is still having trouble with Matthew 5.5. 5. You see, people associate happiness with success, power, confidence, and conquest. But according to Jesus, His kingdom is for those who are meek. Well, today we're going to explore that beatitude. And joining us once again is Pastor Tony Bueno. Pastor Tony, welcome back again. Thank you, Bill. And we have our special guest, Pastor Ron Taransky. Pastor Ron, thank you for being here. It's good to be here. Well, thank you. We appreciate uh, you accepting our invitation. Uh, Pastor Ron, for the benefit of our viewers, uh, they've met Pastor Bueno a couple of times already. Uh, tell us a little bit about you and where you pastor right now. Well, I'm uh, actually part German and part Ukrainian, so that makes me a geranium. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, nationality aside, I, I pastor in Lincoln Pioneer Church near Grimsby, Ontario, not far from Hamilton. And I'm part-time chaplain at the Heritage Green Nursing Home, which I enjoy very much, working Great. for the elderly. Well, wonderful. Is there a website uh, for your church? Uh, it would be on the Ontario website, Ontario Conference. So. Okay, so if they go to Ontario yeah. Conference website, click on there, yeah. they can click on there and find uh, Lincoln Pioneer. Lincoln Pioneer yeah. Seventh-day Adventist, Seventh Church. Adventist Church. Well, thank you, Pastor Ron. Well, um, boy, this is one of them. This is one of those that uh, has created a little bit of discomfort for me because as I studied this and uh, I began, like in my, I, I, I use the NASB and it says, uh -huh. uh, blessed are the gentle. And uh, boy, I think gentleness is something that I, I need to work on. So this is, uh, I'm very much looking forward to the insights that you <laughs> fellows bring because this is something I need to work on in my life. Well, you know, some people would like it to read, blessed are the bullies, but uh, mm. this is not what Jesus <laughs> said. He said, blessed are the meek. And, uh, and yes, the, the word that is used in the Greek uh, version of the New Testament, now we all know that Christ didn't speak in Greek, he spoke in Aramaic. But uh, the first rendition of the New Testament that we have available was in Greek. And uh, if we trust, as we should, that the translators of the New Testament from 
uh, the Aramaic that Christ spoke to the Greek in which the Gospels are recorded did an accurate translation, then the Greek term brings a connotation of uh, being humble, hmm. of being gentle, of being kind, hmm. of being lowly, uh, unassuming. It's, it's really the antithesis of arrogance and self-importance. Uh, is, is that uh, attribute of mm. the heart that considers oneself as second to others, not less than others, but second to others, who instead of saying, let me talk so that you can listen, says, tell me, mm. I want to learn from you. That is the concept of meekness that Christ is presenting here, which of course makes of a person with those characteristics a wonderful friend, because he or she will be kind and gentle and supportive uh, and loyal, in their relationship. Loyal. loyal. Loyal too, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, in fact, uh, I think it's in Second Corinthians uh, chapter 10 that Paul speaks of the, I think it's, Boy, wouldn't that be wonderful if I got the... Uh, oh, yeah, it's Paul, uh, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 1, right? Now I, Paul, myself, urge you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, I who am meek when face to face with you, but bold toward you when absent. Hmm. So, you know, he t makes reference to the meekness and the gentleness of Jesus Christ. I think sometimes folks have a, a hard time understanding, uh, you know, yeah, meekness. Yeah, many times meekness is equated with weakness. Yes. And, and it's not that at all. No, yeah, let me give you a couple examples. Like the doormat the, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. society. Yeah, right? exactly. Let me give you a couple examples in the Bible on that. A couple of people there. We, we, Moses, is, is, he was a great leader, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and he stood up to be the most powerful leader in, in the world. But yet, the Bible tells us that he was meek. And, uh, and uh, he led God's people through the wilderness. Now, Numbers 12.3 is, is a text that tells us that Moses was very meek. It says, there now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. So, that, so it seems to indicate that he was the meekest of all men. But then, of course, we have a, even a greater example in, in Jesus. In Matthew 11.29, he sees Jesus could stand up there in the ship, if you remember when, when and the peace, you know, when he, when he said, peace be still to the winds and the waves. And then the, another example is when he chased the money changers out of the temple, you know, with a whip. But you, you see, Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 puts it in perspective here. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. So there are two examples right there, uh, Moses, number one, and Jesus, the fact that they were the powerful examples, that they had the power in them as well. So yeah. meekness is not weakness. Yeah, and we tend so. not to associate meekness with leaders, with powerful exactly. leaders like exactly. Jesus or, yeah. you know, or, or Moses, right? I mean, that tends not to be on the you know, list of qualifications when you're looking for a corporate CEO, you know. <laughs> Meek, gentle, yeah. doesn't appear. Uh, it, it would be countercultural. Yes, once in, again, in right? Days. Yeah, once again. Uh, but uh, it's interesting about meekness because it's a characteristic that can never be self predicated. The moment anyone were to say, other than Jesus Christ, I'm meek, <laughs> that's <laughs> yes, right, yeah. I am meek, <laughs> uh, <laughs> then <laughs> it becomes obvious that that is self serving, real, yeah. self -serving. real meekness, you know. <laughs> uh, so it has to be recognized, it's something oh, that sure. others observe mm -hmm. and, uh, and they testify to. Mm -hmm. They say, what? Affirm, affirm. Affirm. Yeah. What a meek person, what a humble person. Now, Jesus Christ. Uh, is the only one who rightly could say so about himself because in all things he did, he exhibited that meekness that uh, uh, was so complete and, and total that uh, it was his alone. You know, we had the uh, privilege of having here on set uh, a couple of years ago, Dr. Ben Carson yes, yes. and uh, yeah, famous nice. uh, pediatric neurosurgeon and very accomplished man. Mm -hmm. and, by the way of the world. I mean, he's got everything that the world. And uh, I think all of us that were here, I guess, including the crew that were present, would say that that was a meek man. Mm -hmm. 
uh, with all of those, uh, you know, all of the accolades that he's received and, you know, the circles that he, he moves in, the people he rubs shoulders with. I mean, he could walk in here and be someone, you know, very arrogant. Mm -hmm. and, but I, I saw in him a spirit of and gentle, meekness gentleness. and gentleness, yes, yes, I noticed that too. which was something that was so, so impressive. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting, I mean, as I think about it now, it didn't translate into weakness. Because I would not say he's a weak man. Yeah. He's, he's, in fact, a very powerful man. Could, could we say that weak meekness is strength under control? Hmm. Strength hmm. under control. That's nicely put. Yeah. Very nice. Now, what if God's children, you know, if all of those that claim to be followers of Jesus Christ were, in fact, meek, what would the results of that be? What would happen? What would be happening different in the world or in the church mm -hmm. if we, in fact, mm -hmm. were meek and gentle like Jesus wants us to be? Would they be prime victims of abuse? Well, right. I mean, <laughs> would they be trampled on? Uh-huh. Uh, or would they portray such an example that everybody would stop and look and listen? The real greatness of a person is never self-proclaimed. And... Uh, when you recognize greatness in someone is because you are able to see beyond the exterior. Uh, the meek are people who present to you the inside of who they are. Mm. And in the true humility of their heart, they live a life that is unassuming and uh, that gives credit to God as the giver of all gifts and the provider of the strength to reach any achievement that, uh, that they accomplish and uh, that support others for the contribution that they have made to their own success. Uh, and just to add to that, I, I, I think that, Brother Bill, to answer that question, we would probably be in the kingdom by now. If everyone, if you take literally, everyone would practice that because it does say that the reward will be they shall inherit the earth, the blessed of the meek. So I believe we would be in the kingdom with, with our Lord. It's Jesus. a good, 